we're going to talk about universal health care. Before we dive into the topic, I just wanted to let you know about a, a recent survey. It took a look at Canada, Britain, France, Cuba, and the United States. The United States ranked last or next to last in categories like life expectancy, adult mortality, infant mortality. Yet, in terms of how much we're spending per person, we ranked number one. Made me think, where exactly is the money going? If we're spending all that money, but we're not getting the results, well, as a financial advisor, I gotta tell you, that's a disaster. But when you put it in terms of human cost, it's more than a disaster. It's a tragedy. Joining me in studio is Zenny Cortez. She is one of the four presidents of the Council of Presidents for the California Nurses Association. You know, Zenny, in the debate over health care, universal health care in particular, would you tell us about what universal health care is? And frankly, why is there even a debate over this one? In my mind, it's a fundamental human right. Yeah, I agree with you that it's a fundamental human right. What we're advocating for is that every citizen of California, even of the United States, should be, have health care. What we need is compre comprehensive health care benefits for each and everyone. It's not enough that you are insured. You have to know that you are covered by the benefits. How would the funding work here for a universal health care plan? And, and could one make the argument that the healthy people in the United States are going to be paying for those who are in poor health? Okay, in the universal health care system that we are proposing, which is Senator Sheila Kuehl's bill, SB 840, mm -hmm. the funds are there. We just have to redirect them. In the current system, what happens is every dollar that somebody pays for insurance, 30 cents out of that dollar is paid off to administrative costs. 30%? Yes. So then, with the new system, all of that healthcare dollar would be going to the new system. Maybe a little overhead, which is you know, uh, negligible, but every dollar spent would be directly going to health care. Well, listeners, when you invest in a mutual fund, typically you'll see a sales charge, if there is one, of around five, five and a half percent. Eight percent is considered the maximum. Imagine that if you gave me, though, a hundred thousand dollars and I took thirty percent as the sales charge, <laughs> I think I'd be run out of town on a rail. So frankly, I can't understand that from a healthcare point of view, how 30% is not going to work for the patient. Now, I think it's an obvious question, but I'll ask it anyway. Why do we need a universal healthcare system? Okay, with the universal healthcare system, it would also cover medications, it would cover durable medical equipment, just like wheelchairs, canes, crutches, uh -huh. but like, in the Costco system, when you go to Costco, you buy things in bulk. Okay. So with this universal healthcare single payer, mm -hmm. it would be the same thing. Uh, medications can be bought in bulk. Durable medical equipment, like I said, would be bought in bulk. And so the costs will be built in. But it would allow patients to come in so that if they have any ailments, it will be prevented from becoming worse. In the current system, patients are prevented from coming in because of the high deductibles mm -hmm. and high copays. So that when they come into the hospital, I would say a cyst that's about the size of a pea has now enlarged to a size of a quarter. Mm -hmm. So with the universal healthcare system, we will take care of preventive medicine. It seems to me that preventative medicine would be cheaper in the long run than finding out about something after the fact and having to operate and then expensive medications. Would that be a, an accurate assessment? Yes, that's an accurate assessment because like I said, people will not be afraid and will not be scared to go in to have themselves checked mm -hmm. if there was anything wrong with them. Now folks, we're talking about quality of life here and I think it's important to note if you look at a study done earlier in the year, once prostate cancer screening was covered by insurance, the number of people tested went up, the detection rates went up, but more importantly, the overall costs went down. Do I still get the freedom to choose under universal health care, or are you going to dictate where I go, who I see? Yes, under universal health care, the patient will still have the freedom to choose. The only different thing is that the money that's going to be paid to your health care provider mm -hmm. will be coming from one pot. 
Tell me about the partnership between Michael Moore, the CNA. What are your views on the film? Okay. What are you guys doing? Um, Michael Moore, we had the pleasure of um, uh, being with him yesterday at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. he, he launched the premiere showing of Sicko here in California. Okay. It was well attended. Over a thousand nurses from all over the state and all over the country came okay. uh -huh. to watch the film and to attend a rally and also to talk to the legislature in Sacramento that we are indeed in a health care crisis, mm -hmm. that we need to have universal health care coverage for each and every one. The film exposes the flaws of the health care system that we have. One of the incidences that he showed on the film is a physician who denies claim because if she is able to deny claims on a certain percent, then she is elevated to another position. Who set up this criteria? I can't believe this. It's the insurance industry. The insurance industry set up a performance review criteria where she denies so many claims she gets promoted to head muckety-muck. That's right. That's correct. And so after um, a few years with that certain insurance company, she came out and testified that she caused the death of one person because she denied a kidney transplant. The partnership that we have with Michael Moore is to educate the public and to bring it out to the open that it is important and it's an urgent matter that we pass Senator Sheila Kuehl's bill 840 for California mm -hmm. and Conyers bill for universal health care for all of the United States. HR 676. One of the criticisms that's been lobbied against Michael Moore is that his films are not fair and balanced. In your professional opinion, what did you think of Sicko? Well, I thought he portrayed what the real scenario is, and I can compare it with my everyday life as a nurse, and it's really very accurate, I would say. I see it every day in my everyday life as a nurse, but I was still touched by what I saw. So they, based on your 27 years as a nurse, it did strike home. This is accurate. That's, that's true. What do you want our listeners to do, Zenny? I beg all of our listeners to see the film, get the education of how your health care or your health insurance is working for you, look at your benefits, and demand that you get the health care that you deserve. For some people, I know it's a bold step going out there, you know, demanding, but if you need someone to advocate for you, we have our website where we are asking our fellow citizens to log on and share their horror stories with their healthcare or their insurance provider mm -hmm. and you know we will expose it. Zenny, what website are you referring to? I'm referring to our CNA website. Is that the California Nurses org? Yes, that's okay. correct. And, and we do have a link that would take you there. Final question for you, Zenny. What really matters? Okay, what really matters is that every citizen of California, every citizen of the United States or maybe not even citizen, every person in this great state, in this great nation, should be covered with health care, with comprehensive health care benefits, not just for where you work or what you are, it should be for everybody.